This is an episode of Gym Rescue. My name is Kellon. I'm the CEO of Gym Launch and Prestige Labs. And today I want to tell you the tale of two gyms. One is a gym, it's a hypothetical facility that would start without Gym Launch. And then I want to give you the contrasting plan that we use for gyms that want to launch their facility and do it the right way. And what we're going to stick with is a three month time span from the moment the doors open. And we're going to walk through what most gyms do and then what we would do. So that if you are currently in the process of starting a gym or maybe starting another location, you can learn and be able to implement these best practices so that you can grow and scale your facility so you can reach more people, change more lives, and stack more cash. So let's take gym number one. This is the non-gym launch gym. And let's walk through what typically happens within most independently owned brick and mortar facilities. This is owned by someone who was either a personal trainer or a fitness fanatic, and they really enjoy fitness. They love people. They got a facility and let's say it's two to 3,000 square feet. They wanna do large group training facility or large group classes, and they are super excited about it. They spend a couple months locking down the lease, building it out. They've decided to be prudent with their money. They only buy the equipment that they need. And let's say they only invest 50 thousand dollars into their facility and then about a month prior to opening up they're still purchasing they've spent fifty thousand dollars so they're fifty thousand dollars in the hole you can definitely start a gym for fifty thousand so it's not a ton but that includes paint setting up the facility equipment and everything else so still being very careful with their money then about a month before they start obviously letting people know throwing things on social media organically not running any ads they're trying to get out in the community meet people face to face pop-ups all that stuff they're feeling like they're moving they're getting some traction they are probably coming from another facility or they know people at another facility and they know that they'll be able to pull a couple people over from there, which is the hard truth. Unfortunately, a lot of people just do that and it just is what it is, whether we like it or not. Day one, they open with, let's say 20 clients. Day one, they're killing it. Their average price is $125 per month. This is what we see consistently month in, month out. They charge $125 because they look around them and they look at the pricing and they're like, we're going to undercut them just a little bit so we can provide more value for less price and this is what we're going to do. So they start month one with $125 per month and 20 members. That is $2,500 a month. So they make $2,500. They spent $50,000 to start this facility. They're $2,500 right away. Now, you still got rent, all this stuff. It's not even gonna cover any of those expenses. So month one, they lose money. Then month two, they are trying organic and they're still relying on the buzz and they're getting referrals from these clients. So let's say, and I'm being very generous here, they're not running ads, they're not doing anything else. Let's say they add 10 more members. So now they're at 30, right? And they haven't lost anybody because it's brand new. They're able to give incredible results to everyone. And now they have 30 members. So now they're at 30 times 125, and now you're at 3750. So now they make 3750 month two, plus the 2500 that they made in month one, they've now made $6,250. Month two, they still weren't able to make enough to pay themselves, pay rent, pay all their expenses and do all that stuff. So they still weren't actually able to do it because rent, all the other things that they have, and they forget about trying to pay back the original 50,000 that they had sunk into the place. But they understand it's a long-term game. This is what we want to do. So then month three happens. They're still talking to people in the community. They're not running ads. They're doing posts on social media and they're doing everything organically. They are focused on referrals, which is great. It's a good piece of business, but not to scale and grow the way that you need to in order to start creating cash inside your business and to ultimately get to where you want to go. So let's say they get referrals. Now, industry average, if you're being really good and you have an incredible experience, you're probably going to see no more, no more than 10% of your clients actually refer someone. That doesn't mean you're going to close them. You should, but you typically don't see more than 10% of your clients clientele refer someone to you on a monthly basis. So let's be generous and let's say that 20% of their clientele referred someone and you close that gym, close all of them. So they add six people. So now they have 36 people times 125. Now they made $4,500 in month three. Now, based on their expenses, they might've made some money, but most likely not a ton with rent and everything else. So $4,500 plus 3750 plus 2,500 from month one, they've made a grand total of $10,750 in 90 days, which if you divide it by three months, they've averaged $3,500 per month. Most of the time rent is going to be that, especially for like 3,000 square feet or something like that. You're going to be close to that with all your other expenses and tech, all the other things, utilities, it's going to be there. So they're breaking even in three months or lose, most likely losing money. And they have 36 clients. They haven't even put a dent in the $50,000. That is what typically happens with most gyms independent that want to start. Now let's talk about gym number two. So keep that in mind. They've made a little over $10,000 in the first three months. They still have not paid 
anything back of the 50,000 and they have 36 clients. Let's walk through how we would start gym number two. And we've done this multiple times. In fact, one of our clients, this is just one example, we were able to scale them to $75,000 in four months, just using exactly what we laid out in the Gym Launch Secrets book and in our systems. It's that simple. But let's walk through how we would do it. The first step would be locking down a lease. So they negotiate a lease and they figure out where they're gonna do it. How they figure out where they're gonna put that facility is they actually run tests on Facebook, running ads for a fitness offer, and they throw some money behind it. And whichever location and radius gets the most amount of leads, that's where they look to rent a spot. So they rent a spot in the place that has the highest amount of leads for a fitness offer. Then they sign the lease. They don't buy any equipment yet. They buy nothing. They have the plans and everything. They sign the lease and they have it set and that's great. But then immediately, eight weeks out, the goal is to start in eight weeks. As soon as they sign a lease, they start running ads for a six week challenge. And they are doing this as a grand opening challenge. And for eight straight weeks, while they're building everything out and getting everything set, which is gonna be as bare bones as possible. It's gonna have fresh paint. It's gonna be clean. It's gonna have the right turf or mats. It's gonna have the right equipment. Whatever is needed in order to fulfill large group classes, that's what they're gonna do, but they're not gonna go crazy. But here's the kicker. They're not gonna come out of pocket for that. They're gonna take the money that all these people are paying them that they're signing up for eight straight weeks prior to even opening, and they're gonna use that money to pay for the equipment. So let's just do the back of napkin math here. So let's say they spend $100 per day for eight weeks. You're gonna spend roughly $6,000 in advertising. Here's what's gonna happen, and I'll do the math for you. So let's say you spend $100 a day, and that's $6,000. Over the course of those eight weeks, you're gonna have 600 leads. $10 a lead, you're gonna have roughly 600 leads. So out of those 600 leads, let's say 300 of them, just half, which is kind of normal, let's say half of them, schedule an appointment. So you have 300 people people schedule an appointment to come show up. Out of those people, you get 60% of them to show. So 60% of 300 is 180 people show. It's a grand opening, it's something really cool. And then what you decide to do is not be great at closing and you close 55% of them and you close 100 people at 599 for a six week challenge that you haven't even started fulfilling on. So you're not actually losing any money yet, you're literally just gaining money. So for $6,000 out of pocket, plus your rent and everything else that you have, but for $6,000 now that you've spent, you haven't bought equipment yet, over the course of those eight weeks, you're now funding your equipment purchase. And so you then go after those 100 people, you're making $59,000 in cash collected. Cash collected, this is not contract, cash collected. You make $59,000, you take 20,000 of that, you sock it aside for equipment, you buy $20,000 worth of equipment to get started. Knowing that you can consistently add more equipment as you go, the moment you open, you've got 100 members that are starting with you and paid you $60,000. So instead of being $50,000 in the hole, you now actually have profited roughly $30,000 to $35,000 of cash that you've collected and ready to go. And so now you start fulfilling on those. But here's the kicker, you never stop selling. So you consistently sell, you set up your schedule, so you're consistently selling. And then you do the same thing in month one where you sign up another, let's say 25 people, knowing that all the rest of those people are in a trial. So 25 people times 599, you've added another $15,000, 14,975 in front end cash flow. So you got another 25 members. So now you have 125 people who are in your facility and overall you've collected almost $75,000 in cash. Then what happens in month two is those 100 people that you signed up are now coming up to conversions. Let's say you convert 60% of them. Benchmark is 70%. Let's say you convert 60 people into reoccurring memberships halfway through. Using the price points that we tell our clients to do, which is $49 a week, now you're making, per month, you've added $12,000 in EFT, $12,000. So now instead of making $2,500 a month one, like Jim one did, 37.50 the next month, and then 4,000 or whatever it was, month three, and only collecting $10,000 worth of cash, you've already collected $75,000 worth of cash in just the 12 weeks, only one month of actually being open, but eight weeks of pre-sales. Then you convert the others while still selling new people in, you convert 60 people into reoccurring memberships, year-long memberships at $49 a week, and all of a sudden by month three, you've got already $12,000, almost $13,000 in reoccurring revenue that's happening, which means you can be profitable immediately day one. And as you grow and scale, you're going to consistently just keep stacking cash by selling new people in, putting them into a challenge or a trial, converting them consistently, and then keeping the cash on the back end and making sure that you're over delivering for your clients. So by the end of month three, if you do that again, so those 25 that you have, and then you sign up another 25, by the end of month three, you would have had another 15 EFTs because they signed up in month one. So they converted in month three. So another 15 EFTs. So now you're at 75 EFTs with another other 50 people currently going through a trial because you're signing all those people up, but just the EFT money would 
would be $15,000 by the end of month three. Just an EFT reoccurring revenue. That's it, just that. And then you've got another 50 people that are gonna convert because you signed up another 25 in month two and you signed up another 25 in month three. And so you think of all that cash, another 50 people signing up at 599, stack another $30,000 on top of that. So when you think about it, as you're going through, you made $60,000 on pre-sales. Then you sold another 25 in month one, that's $15,000. So now we're at $75,000 in cash collected. Then in month two, you convert them. So you're starting to collect EFT, which is $12,000 of those 60 people. And then month two, you sign up another 25, that's another 15,000. So now we're already at 90,000 plus the EFT. We're at $102,000 in revenue collected, cash and revenue collected. Then month three, you sign up another 25. So now we're at 117,000 plus another 15,000 in EFT. So now you're over $130,000 in money collected in 12 weeks, just by using the right pricing strategies, the right launching strategies and the right systems. So you go from being $50,000 in the hole, not being able to make rent and not being able to take a profit to making over $130,000 in just 12 short weeks of being open. Now the question becomes is which one would you choose? Because unfortunately, 95% of gym owners choose gym one because they think that's the way that it needs to be done and they've been sold a lie. There's a way better way to do it. And this model is used by the top franchises in the world, by incredible different styles of gyms. And it's very simple to actually execute. And it's frankly, a lot of fun. It's some of the most fun that we have when we work with gym owners that are opening a new location and they have the ability, the wherewithal and desire to be coached by us, we'll show them and walk them through that and they crush, they absolutely crush. And they're able to scale so much faster than anybody else. And they start the right way, their clients love them, and they're able to be bought into a system that actually works. So if you like this information, you found it interesting, we have a full channel with more information just like this, other gym rescue additions where I actually walk through actual real life gyms, break down their numbers and show them how they can fix them to become more profitable. But if you're a gym owner and you're thinking, man, I wanna start a gym, I'm really interested in this, how should I do it? Gym number two, be that gym. If you wanna learn and you wanna be able to do that on your own, or learn from us, we have that opportunity. But either way, check out our channel. There's a ton of free content on there. I hope you find value in it. And just remember, gym owners rule.